Alright guys, um, this video is a little bit different because we're actually not going to draw anything as far as moving anything on these models. And really, I'm just showing you stuff that we've already kind of discussed, but we're going to look at it a little bit differently. Alright, starting all the way to the right, we have our aggregate supply, aggregate demand model, and it is beginning in long run equilibrium. So here's the thing of how questions are going to go. So this is kind of a helping you out to get ready to answer questions video. Um, there's always going to be a starting point when you have an FRQ or when you're asked to draw. Um, changes in, you know, changing aggregate demand, changing aggregate supply, whatever the case is, it'll tell you the scenario. And so the scenario will tell you a starting point. So we have three different starting points here. We have an economy beginning in long run equilibrium. We have an economy beginning in a recessionary gap. And we have an economy in an inflationary gap. And so really I just want to describe each one of these three things. We can see it. But this is how you would start these models. Um, so let's start with the basic one. Let's start with long run equilibrium. So as you see, this one is the most basic one because equilibrium is where all three curves uh, meet. We have aggregate supply, aggregate demand, and they are crossing, intersecting on our long run aggregate supply curve. We see that this YP, hopefully you remember from uh, previous videos, that YP, remember Y, that variable means three things. It means real GDP means income and it means output. And those three things are all the same synonymous. So this is, we're gonna call it output, and that P is for potential. So YP is potential output, okay? This is how much an economy produces in the long run once prices and wages have become flexible. So once they've had time to adjust. Another thing that this means, and this is the important one that we're gonna look at today, is that when we are operating anywhere along this LRAS curve, on potential output. What this means is that we are in a condition of full employment. So I'm going to put that there. So when we are in long run equilibrium, full employment, now you might have to go back in your mind to a previous section. When we talk about full employment, that does not mean that there is no unemployment. If you recall, full, un or full employment, I'm sorry, is structural. Um, plus frictional unemployment. Okay, that is the natural rate of unemployment. Structural unemployment, that's the type um, that means that your skills don't match jobs that are in demand. So that creates structural unemployment. Frictional unemployment is time spent in a job search. So we have those two types. We add them together and that equals our natural rate of unemployment. Natural rate of unemployment is the same as this. It is the full, it is full employment. So when we are at here, if you remember what kind of unemployment is missing from that, and hopefully you got that, it's cyclical. There is no cyclical unemployment when we are on the long run curve. Cyclical unemployment is caused by changes in the business cycle. So again, think back, we're taking old ideas now and we're showing how they look on this model. Um, the business cycle we have, remember the kind of wave thing where we have an expansion, a trough, a peak recession. So. When we have cyclical unemployment, it's caused by us either being in an expansion or being in a recession by one of those things. When we're on the long run curve, there is no cyclical unemployment. So that means that we are at the full level of unemployment. So natural rate of unemployment or full employment when we're on the long run curve. On the other hand, in this center one, this is a recessionary gap. So the question will tell you an economy beginning in a recessionary gap or they might expect you to know what the case will be with unemployment. So, what is unemployment like? Well, we might be able to answer it just because the word recession we know is bad for an economy, so we might figure it out that way. What I want you, us to do is do it this way. What is happening to output here? So, the key thing here, when we are in a recessionary gap, how do we draw this? So, before I get into explaining and all that, let me not skip everything that's relative here. We have our LRAS curve, we have our SRAS aggregate demand, and what we notice is that the short run aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve, that they are intersecting to the left of the long run aggregate supply curve. So E1 we see is to the left. So what that means is actual output is less than potential output, which we had written this previously, but let's go ahead and put that. So actual output, which is Y, is less than potential output. And we see this right here, Y1 and YP. 
Um, and this is our recessionary gap. So that recessionary gap is the difference between potential output and actual output. And so when potential output is greater than actual output, that means that we are in a recessionary gap. So the way that we draw that is simply to have AD and SRAS intersect anywhere to the left of the LRAS curve. Okay? The LRAS curve doesn't have to be dead center, that doesn't matter. The idea what the reader or the grader will be looking for is, is that equilibrium to the left? And so what is that showing us? So it's showing us, first of all, that potential output is greater than actual output. So how we can do this, and we're going to walk through this in more detail later on. We've kind of already done this previously. So step one is that we have clearly falling output. We have less output. That's what that says. Output is less than potential output. As a result of having less output, do we need as many workers? And the answer is no. Because we are not producing as much, and that is what this is telling us, output is falling, it is below potential, it means that we are going to have higher unemployment. Okay? So another key thing, by looking at our aggregate supply, aggregate demand model, we can know what unemployment is like. Even though there are no numbers on this model, we know right now that at E1, actual unemployment is above the natural rate. So we have high unemployment here. So anytime we're in a recessionary gap, or anytime we're to the left of LRAS, we have high unemployment. On the other hand, with the inflationary gap, so we can move through this one, it's not too different, it's just the exact opposite really. Um, inflationary gap, what we're seeing here is that actual output, E1 is to the right of the LRAS curve. So actual output is greater than potential output. So what that means is we are producing above and beyond what we can do at full employment level. So number one, output is high. As a result of that, when output is high, we need more workers. So unemployment is going to fall. So we are going to have low unemployment. So when we are operating at E1 in an inflationary gap, which is anywhere to the right beyond LRAS, this means that we have low unemployment. So I want us to be able to look at these models and know Long run equilibrium, we are in exactly equal to full employment. Here, we are, unemployment is greater than full employment. It is above the natural rate. We have high unemployment, and in an inflationary gap, we have low unemployment. Now, as far as how these are possible, they've been discussed in other videos and will be discussed in future videos, so don't worry about that quite yet. This is how we draw these, and this is what this stuff means. So again, don't overlook this video. I think this can be helpful, even though you know, we didn't really do anything to our models to show what all these things mean. So again, hope that helps you guys. Till next time, this has been a Money Production.